happy Thursday. Happy, happy 2021. That too. Yes. I know. W O N 21. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we're here. Yay. I am Dr. Charlie, the book mama. Stephanie Thank Palmer, you. the grammar queen. And we're really glad to join you in yes. a new year. So, hey guys, take time to like and share us, especially with someone that you know has aspiring goals in yes. the new yes. year yes. to write a book. We have already heard from quite a few people that we that have. is part of yes. their I don't know that they say a resolution. Mm -mm, they, Resolution's yeah. like an outward now. It's like yeah. goals. Yeah. Yeah. Need to have <laughs> goals. No resolutions. Yeah. Out with the resolutions no. in with the goals. We resolve not yes. to have resolutions. That's it. We're going to set ourselves up to have great goals. Yes, yes, yes. Right? right. Did I say yes. that well? Yes. Oh good. Yes. Maybe I should do that for myself. <laughs> hey, we're working it on it. It feels like we're, we're still working. catching yeah. up. It does. It's Man. like yeah, the holidays were like it's like it's day seven in January. Yes. One it, weekend. Um, wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm still going, wow. We yeah. really we're seven days into this. It's yes. crazy. So you had a wonderful Christmas. I did. I had a great Christmas. It I'm was so fantastic. Glad. I was able to get off of social media, just enjoy family. It was great. Right. I had a lot of bonfires. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I did is I just cleared trees and burned trees and, but it was fun. Yeah, I enjoyed you, yeah. it. You made it work. You know, I made it work. We had bonfire Christmas y'all. So uh, we're going to have an interesting show today, yes. partly because it has to do with goals and, and Stephanie came up with this great idea for the show today. So I'm going to let you share what it is. It is the three C's of Wait, what? We're in no. 2021. Yeah, 21. Yeah. Three C's of writing. <laughs> it's already started, y'all. Ah, yeah, look. Three C's of writing for 2021. Right. Clarity, commitment, and confidence. I found something you're going to love. Like, you're really going to love this. Everything that you bring up. Don't lie. Don't lie. <laughs> okay. I found a quote. Okay. Do you remember Pascal from math? No. Okay. Ma you right. math. I like. You no, know, he was in this French philosopher and mathematician dude that, yeah. you know, he did some pretty brilliant stuff back in the day. Gotcha. I mean, a long, long time ago, you know, like further back than four, four, four score and seven years ago. You know, so, I think you're in close running with Darren as far as like random facts. I'm like, y'all are tied like right there at the top. You just pull out these names. And I, yeah, you I, but I'm learning. Learn You're teaching me. But, You're such a great well, I teacher. I never wanted to know about Pascal. I think that was Linda Ferrasi in seventh grade who said, "Let me tell you about Pascal. It's important that you know this guy." So anyway, I'm glad you remember him. <laughs> so, but he had a really great quote okay. about clarity that I think you're actually really going to like. Okay, he said, "Clarity of mind means clarity of passion too." Mm, that's good. So true. It's so true. Yeah. So if your mind is clear, then your passion can be clear. Yes. And then I found another one. This quote was unknown, but I thought that you would appreciate this one too. Clarity is the moment we see without opening our eyes. Mm, that's good. I, I know. It. Just kind of yeah. let that sit there a minute. Yeah. Clarity Say that the, one more time. Yeah. Clarity is the moment we see without opening our eyes. Yes. That is so I like true. those. Yeah, me too. So I mean, I, we can end. We can end the show on that. Like, I mean, that's that's it. That's all you see need. See you next week, folks. No. <laughs> we're not gonna do. Okay, where where did that come from? Where's that quote from? See you next week, folks. That's all, folks. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, now I know, Bugs Bunny. Now I can. There okay, you go. Hey, you know folks. what? I I feel like I have just gained more wisdom. Okay. I'm so dating myself. You want to talk about the three C's and get me out of this hot water? Yes. Let's talk about the three C's. <laughs> okay. and, and you kind of even started with the whole clarity piece, but even going into the quotes, defining clarity, you know, a lot of people don't even really grasp the concept. And I know I, you know, I have to work on it as well. You know, when you're trying to achieve a goal or you're trying to do something, you need to have clarity before you get ready to do it. So. Ultimately, it just means clearness, like being able to, you know, see with your eyes closed <laughs> um, right. and, you know, being coherent and easily understood. 
what, what, what areas like for clarity, what areas do you struggle finding clarity? Um, my thing is clarity for me is tackling my to-do list and prioritizing what needs to, what needs yeah. to go first. That's an acquired skill. Yeah. You have to really. Yeah. So I recently cleaned out my closet. And that's what popped into my mind is I stood there looking at this closet and, and I'm like, I need clarity. Like what goes where, how are we going to do this? How is it going to work? Right. Yeah. So I needed clarity. Yeah. So you almost have to step, step back, back. Yes. and look at everything yes. on the list or everything that's yeah. contributing to the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Or even having my thing, even with to help me with clarity, is getting outside help. Um, I'm big on like if I have something, some tasks to um, to do, I will ask Darren to like hey, give me clarity. Like, what do I need to do first, or how would you do this to get somebody else's thoughts and perspective as opposed to and you does know, he give you it. clarity, or does he give you a random historical fact? He probably does both <laughs> simultaneously, but <laughs> probably. But for the most part, um, having that outside perspective and guidance has been, right. you know, is very beneficial when it comes to clarity. Okay, yeah. So that that's really good. So we want to talk about clarity and writing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes that is a messy closet in itself. It is so, yeah. And there's layers to it for sure. Right. Yeah. So what does that look like? The biggest thing with clarity when it comes to writing is, of course, and we talk about it all the time. So it's like, you know, and everybody talks about your why, your why, your why. You want to know why you're writing or, you know, have clarity with why you're writing the book or writing what you're writing and have clarity with what you're writing. So right. keeping those two in mind and at the forefront as you're going through the process is very, very important. If not, right. you'll lose sight. And you won't have clarity. So sometimes we have authors who write books and then yeah. they may write a supplement to that book. So it might be a journal or it might be a workbook or something yeah. like that. Yes. Yeah. And they're trying to write the supplement while they're writing the book. Yeah. That's not clarity. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> supplement means in addition to. Right. Supplement means after the fact, right. you know, you know, attached to link to related to, but not it right so that that can that's yeah. one of the things that we see sometimes yeah. with writers is the lack of clarity yeah right Absolutely. um I, I love the why you know we talk about this a lot but it really it's like the compass for a writer yes it is it yeah. really it helps you find or, and, your true and north. goals and goals all together sure. knowing why you're doing something is going to keep you Continue right. to do it. Are you trying to save the youth of America? Or are you trying to sell your bug spray? Right. Right. <laughs> I don't know why bug spray came to mind. No head. idea either. You know Maybe what? clean in the closet. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't have bugs in my closet. Well, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I'm just saying. <laughs> I had a lot of boots, but <laughs> I didn't have any bugs. Hey, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you ask yourself to find your clarity? What are some things that some good questions that a writer can ask themselves to help bring it in. What makes me want to write this specific book? Okay. So like you said, the bug spray or saving youth, you know, what, what am I writing for? Who am I writing to? Those type things. Those are like the two biggest because that is going to be able to, you know, provide the, the clarity that you need. We're going to just be redundant with the word clarity. Just y'all going to hear it multiple times, but uh, good morning, Gen C. Hey, Gen C. Yes. Um, hey, Latoya. Hey, Latoya. And Nikisha. And, and Nikisha. Nikisha. Yeah. Uh, on Instagram. Um, so yeah, just, just asking those questions and, and keeping those in mind. Okay. So one of the things that helps me figure those things out is kind of knowing what makes me relatable. What, what is my knowledge base or what yes. is my experience? Yeah. So, um, you know, when I'm writing, I have to come at it from what I know. Right. You know, and sometimes, so that's, that's sometimes your message is you got to keep bringing it back around. Yeah. You can't go read somebody at somebody else's stuff. Yes. I mean, it might highlight what you already mm -hmm. know, 
but don't try to recreate what they've already done yeah. because that was their story. You need to write yours. Right. Yes. To thine own self be true. Shakespeare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 I will take it. I will take it. <laughs> it is 2021. She has done it. Hey, that's I have hey. trained the grammar queen. She just knew a Shakespeare quote. We can shut it down. Go home. <laughs> Come on, 2022. Yeah, I have achieved it. something <laughs> in 2021. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of myself <laughs> and you right now. Yay. Yeah. See, she's rubbing off on me. Y'all, <laughs> that could be a good thing or that could be a Bad very thing. scary thing. You know, yeah. I feel like Who I knows? need a Superman cape. Trophy today, right? Even our viewers are like, <laughs> Yeah, she needs a trophy. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. okay, I'm sorry. Off topic, that was my very excited squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, if this is your first time watching Writers Therapy. We are really drinking straight water and straight up yeah. black coffee around here. Like, I just want you to know yeah. that you would have to go exactly. back, which you can do and watch all of our yes. shows on our YouTube channel. But truly, truly, that was an achievement. Like, yes, woohoo! Yes. This is a hey, great I start day. 2021 out right. <laughs> like, hey, okay. okay. So, where were we? We, we lost our yeah. clarity. Yeah, to thine own self be true. So we quoted Sha right. you quoted Shakespeare and yes. talking about what really, um, and it goes back to staying in your lane. So you know, writing about what you're passionate about, what you know, what your a theme, an overall theme that mm -hmm. people can you know you can be able to share. So like something that I really think that like even you and I, the commonality between us is you know uh, a wife, mother. You know, th those lanes right there, you know, are definitely um, some things that we can write about pretty much all day, every day yes. um, is being a wife and a mom. Now, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to write about being a chef or, uh, you know, being a race car driver because those are things that, you know, I'm not passionate about, you know, never really done those right. things. So, yeah. Well, I'm so glad you said that. It made me remember something I forgot to do. <laughs> Cook. No, on the crock pot? no, no, my <laughs> son asked me for a recipe, y'all, and I forgot to send it to him. <laughs> he wants me to send him a, squirrel, a recipe for squirrel dumplings. I'm gonna let y'all have all of that. <laughs> I didn't say I liked it, just got a recipe for it. <laughs> Everybody out there's going, Did she really just say squirrel? <laughs> yes, she did. It's 2021, anything goes. So, okay, so what's our next C? Well, wait before we process oh, I can't. that. Yeah, uh, no, no, no. You're jumping ahead. Look at you. Okay, I'm just so excited. Um, even a uh, question to ask, or you know, what stories have you read um, that that you relate to? So, you know, if it's authors that you've read, you know, what kind of um, lives have they lived that are similar to yours? Kind of like with our, you know, mom and wife piece. <laughs> Jinzy says, and, "Let us pray." <laughs> We will be doing that. Definitely. I Thank you for joining us. In prayer. You, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and then the last question is, how does this book fit into my overall long-term plan as an author or speaker or entrepreneur or whatever that looks like? You definitely want to keep that plan in mind because you don't want to write about butterflies if you're trying to speak about, you know, women empowerment. That's kind of, you know, de defeating the purpose when it comes to. Butterflies have power. I do, but we don't want to talk about uh, butterflies the whole time. You can use an, that analogy or metaphor, but okay, don't just you know talk about butterflies. Okay, okay, we're diverting. Okay, um, write out a mission mission statement if if there's and you're gonna you're gonna fix it and put me under the under I the will bus. Not. You, okay, so no, um, so yeah, so writing out a mission statement as an author, you know. The brief description of purpose, setting so out the goals. So that challenged me. So yeah. Stephanie presented me with this before the show, and that challenged yes. me because I don't have a, I have a personal mission statement, but I don't no. have a mission statement as, as an, an author. author. Yeah. And I have an identity statement, mm -hmm. but I don't know that it is connected to my writing. Mm, that's so think about. I'm going to have to really chew on this one. Yeah. I have been challenged by the grammar queen. Woohoo! 
Hmm. I won my challenge today, so we're going to wait and see what you do. Yeah, okay. you challenged me with a quote. and I, I feel like we both won with that one. <laughs> we, we did. We did. Won. Yeah. All right. So, And, I, and I'm the same way with you. I, I don't have a, a mission statement as an author, so I'm going to that's, challenge myself. That's a, yeah. So, yeah. So I know that we have a couple of authors watching, and I would be curious to know yeah. if they have a mission statement as an author. Like, did yeah. you write down a mission statement for how you would write or what you would bring forth into the world as an mm -hmm. author. I mean, that's really, yeah, that's, that's a really fascinating it concept. Is. It is. Yeah. I'm going to have to chew on that one. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. We'll, we'll let y'all know when we finish ours so we can share it with y'all and then feel free to share y'all's mission statement with us. If you don't have one, I encourage you. Get one about Shakespeare yeah. quote and you feel like you can volunteer me for something. Yeah, I'm <laughs> yes. Yes. I volunteer <laughs> myself. And the book mama. Okay. To write a mission. All right. I'll let you do it. You let me You've know. earned it. Okay. Oh, I challenge you. Okay. Or I'll let you challenge you. me. You've earned it. Yay. Okay. So um, just before we go into the next piece, um, tips for clarity. Mm. I would, I, I like the backup method. Okay. Tell us about the back. Expound on okay. that. Okay. So when, sometimes when I want clarity, I have to remember a very wise piece of advice that my husband gives Okay. for an arrow to hit its mark. It must first be pulled back. Mm. And the more it's pulled back, the more likely it is to hit the bullseye. Mm. And so it's just like when you're standing right in the middle of a lack of clarity, mm -hmm. if you can back up and look at everything and get a better holistic perspective of everything, I feel like that helps you categorize. And I feel like that helps you really pinpoint things. Yes. So I, I like the backup method. Yeah. And even, even while you are saying that I'm even thinking that from an editor's perspective, because we'll have authors that, you know, as far as our accountability goes, we, you know, request that they send, you know, submit a chapter each week. And then they're eager for us to read that chapter and tell, tell them what we think. Uh, However, having that, what do you call it? The back, the backup method, the backup method and waiting until the book is completely done as a holistic approach to the entire book, because we could tell you something is great, but if you keep submitting chapters and none of them intertwine or connect and, you know, they're completely yeah. off topic. You really, you know, are doing a disservice as far as editing goes because, you know, th they right. won't have clarity. We won't have clarity. And so I think that's a great, yeah, that's, oh, that's awesome. I really like the backup method. Yep. Yeah. Shout out to Hot Rod. Yes. Yes. We, we appreciate that wisdom that you have bestowed upon the book mama. Okay. So here we go. Okay. Um, so, and I think even that kind of ties in with reflecting, um, well, not really. I mean, it's it's overall looking, but even I guess it, it does kind of tie in with reflection. But I, I like the backup backup method. Is that what you, we're gonna like incorporate? I just kind of dubbed it that, you know. But, okay, but that that works. Yeah, I like it. Okay, um, organization, and this is key when it comes to to writing. And we always well, do. I get to say our favorite word. You do get to say our outline. Favorite word. Yes. Not an outline. 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 As much as you possibly outline, can. Outline, outline. Please do that. It will help make our jobs easier and it will help make the writing easier if you are going by an outline because that is the guide that we will be able to use and let and we'll be able to let the authors know like, hey, your outline says this, but you wrote about this. You might want to revert back to your outline. You can always change the outline, but to make sure that the overall, you know, the, the book has clarity, you want to be able to tie the two together. So you want to be able to check the outline and make sure that it is aligning with the content that you have yes. written. Yes. Okay. Don't be afraid to break the rules. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes. Yeah. 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 So you can't break the outline rule. No, that is like, that is like <laughs> the number one thing. You can't you break cannot. the outline rule. Yeah. If you break the outline rule, you might not get into yeah. heaven. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> No, we will I'm be kidding. we will be praying. I'm on pretty that. sure that was not between <laughs> Genesis and Revelation, but if I could add something, it might be the outline rule. <laughs> that is part of our editor's prayer that you have an outline. That should be part of our writing mission. Yeah, statement. there you go. Yes, well, that should be part of your mission statement. Yes, yeah, that would yes. be good. Yeah, but 
it, sometimes you have to do something a little bit different. Right. To keep your clarity. Yes. To yeah. not, not, yeah. not, to not write the outline. Right. You didn't hear that. Yeah. It's to, to keep your clarity. Yeah. So sometimes um, I, when we work with authors very often, they think that they're going to write as, they, they slate a time in every day to write a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that might work for a while. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly um, a strange virus hits their country and their children are sent home to homeschool and they are working from home and they're homeschooling from home. And does this sound familiar? It sounds so familiar. Like, <laughs> um, and yeah. so why so happens, last year, <laughs> no, last year, uh, but life happens. And so they may have to redirect in order to keep their clarity. Yes. And so you suddenly may hear your book coach, the book mama say, maybe it's time for a three day weekend in a hotel room by yourself. Yeah. So that you can keep your clarity, keep your focus, meet your goals. So that that's kind of breaking the rules. Yeah. Yeah, you know, maybe like personal rules that you set up for your writing time. Yeah. I, yeah, totally. And I'm even looking at it as far as um, not necessarily writing style, but um, there was an author and she takes like she goes from her outline. So she has her chapters and she writes them on index cards. She writes each chapter on an index card and then she like them, you know, she um, switches them off, shuffles them up and then she'll just randomly pick one one week and write out of order to kind of shift things a little bit that made my insides quiver <laughs> like I, I could not do that y'all I could not that makes me yeah she that just yeah frightens me no man that's gutsy yeah that's well, gutsy and I've even kind of sometimes I have you know I, I write backwards occasionally but then I can always go back and clean it up but if like you know, I'll, I'll get overwhelmed with, oh, I know this chapter is coming up next. And I'm kind of like, eh, yeah. I'm not really feeling the content for right. that. Let me skip a chapter or That's let me different from pot shot. Right. Well, she doesn't, do it, she doesn't do it all the time. But when she's when she's in that that mode of where she's not she's not having clarity, she's kind of, you know, going through writer's block or whatever. She'll wow. just shuffle them up and pick one. Wow. That's that's gutsy. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. OK, that's a very good example. Yeah. We don't, we don't request that you do that unless you know, you're really stuck in unless that, in that mode. Yeah. 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 That's okay. like drawing straws. Like, yeah. wow. Yeah. Okay. okay. So the next C commitment. commitment. Yeah. I just want to say something about commitment. Okay. Go ahead. Let's, let's hear it. Y'all get your pen and paper ready. Be committed the whole way through. Say that one more time. Be committed the whole way through. Now, I say that with the understanding that a process and a project has waves and a project almost has seasons. Mm, okay. Yes. And so... That initial writing, getting the book out, like just, I just got to get it out and get it turned into my editor. That is, that is literally like the biggest challenge. Okay. Right. And, and we understand that, but you don't just get to turn it over to us and then we're going to wave a magic wand. Hocus pocus. There it is. Yeah. There is a process. Yes. And the editing is just as important as the writing. It just looks different. Right. And you can't fall asleep during editing. And then right before your book goes to print, you suddenly decide that you are a grammar Nazi and that you're going to go through and fix your book. It doesn't mm -hmm. work like that. It doesn't work like that because you're actually creating more work for yourself and the editors. If you are committed the whole way through every step, yes. even if you need to take a little longer right. for those steps, that's yes. okay. <clears throat> we understand that. Look, if you get, if you turn that book over and we, you know, do an initial assessment and we yes. look at that book and we're like, 
you know, this is our comments and you get it back and you're like, you killed a whale. There is blood everywhere all over my book, and which is not necessarily true, but some people feel that way. So, and you're like, I, I can't do this right now. I need a few weeks. That's okay. Yeah. We, we understand, just say, you know what, it might be a minute before I can commit myself to right. looking back at this again. That I can respect. It's, it's when you wait until the very end to yes. decide that you didn't want to use that word all the way through the book. Yes. Not a good time to do that. Mm -mm. And there are several reasons for that, but it's just so com important. Stay committed yes. through the yes. whole Yes. process. And that reminds me of a quote. It's like two mistakes one can make in life. We're going to two mistakes one can make in writing, not going all the way or not starting at all. Wow. Yeah. That's big. Yeah. That, and that's, that's like, had us stop for a moment, but that's, but it's so true. Well, didn't Dolly Parton say tinkle or get off the potty? Right. I'm sorry. I'm just keeping it real, y'all. That's kind of where I'm at. <laughs> and but I mean, and that's what we see that all the time. They're so eager and anxious and excited to get it done. They just push through, and you know, don't they don't they don't right. commit. They do not commit. You, and and the thing about it is, saying you're committed and being committed are two different things. Oh yes. So you know, we're talking about marriage, or <laughs> right? <laughs> relationships or books yeah we are therapists you yes. know self-proclaimed yes self-proclaimed self -proclaimed. Yes. but yes yeah. we are do not turn us in or report us we are self-proclaimed <laughs> writers therapists <laughs> if you wrote in and told anybody those writers therapists really need to have their licenses <laughs> revoked they're gonna go okay, <laughs> okay. but yeah commitment yes because becoming a writer is not as hard as staying one it's easy to start something I mean, if you really think about it, how many times have you started? Well, I'm, and I'm speaking for myself. I have started and stopped so many different things that, I mean, it, it's it's difficult to stay committed. I have so many books up here yes. that I've started in my mind. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes those require that like aren't a book. They published yeah. yet. Yeah. They're good, but they're still up here. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes doing a brain dump, getting everything out is good, but at the same time, you know, you can create a plan, you can do all these great things, but if you're not going to commit to it, I mean, wh why are you even doing it? And starting is usually actually easy. Yeah. Starting the is idea easy. Yeah, the idea of Because you get excited, yeah. the motivation's going, you get the adrenaline yeah. rush and just the thought of it. I mean, you visualize yourself as the author, you visualize yourself with that book in your hands and, and all of those things are great, but it's the in-between where, you, you know, a lot of people get lost. Yep. So, yeah. Oh, okay. So self doubt, <clears throat> sorry, self doubt, fear, and limiting beliefs often show up in commitment. Yes, yeah. absolutely. They yeah. can really change our commitment, and it. The self doubt. Now, I, I have to. I have to tell y'all that, that that is something that in my writing process, I'm I'm committed. I start. I'm going good. And that self-doubt starts creeping yes, in and yeah. it is really hard yes. for me to keep writing through that. Yeah. And it's, and it, I mean, it, it happens to everyone, but pushing past it is, right. is a challenge because so I I've been having to do some self-taught because you know, I'm right. I'm working on a book right now. Yes. And so it seems like as soon as I started writing my book, everywhere I looked, there were advertisements popping up about people writing on a similar topic. Mm. And so that self doubt, you, you know, yeah. you think, well, what I have to say really probably doesn't matter. Somebody else has already said it. I'm sure they said it better than I did. Mm. No, 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 no. That's not true. Right. That's not true. Yeah. Because you do have something valuable to say in your story is nobody has the same story. Mm. It, okay. it, it we're just not designed like that. Mm -hmm. Nobody has the same story. So, okay. So what else? Self doubt. When you have self doubt, it leads to procrastination. Oh, it leads to procrastination. So when you start 
thinking those things. By the know, way, you do not have to be able to spell procrastination in order to practice it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that out there. And um, and resistance. Um, you know, like like you say, you're you're. It's it's really a battle within the mind. You are pushing through what that looks like because I mean, and it's different for right. everyone. I mean, you start thinking all of these off the wall thoughts that, you know, never would have even shown up had you not made the commitment to write the book. Right. So absolutely. Okay. So tips for commitment, how do you, how, do, how, how can, how, how do you stay committed? Well, accountability, I think is good. Yes. I, I like accountability. Yeah, that's like number one. Um, Who's holding you accountable? Um, I have some friends who are oh. holding me accountable. Okay, I just didn't know if you wanted the grammar queen to do that or not. But it, I, I mean, would I love the grammar queen to do that. You know what? Look, she's challenging me, y'all, and I'm going to accept that she's challenge. Just, hey, I'll send you my but link. But I do have. Schedule. I'm so, I'm oh my gosh! I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're good. Yes, Let's but go. I really do. I, I have yeah. some people, you know, that are are kind of they're just regularly. So how's that book? How are you doing? You know, those kind of things. So they, they are asking me about that. But you haven't went through the process of how, like what we do with our authors and have them submit something weekly. Have you done that yet? No, I haven't done that. 2021 is a great year to do that. What's your next point? <laughs> hey, we'll, we'll talk about that off air. Yeah. Off I air. I've been denial. The first step <laughs> in all 12 steps is admitting you have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> hey, while we're at it, we're just, Hey, we're going to, we're going to okay. commit and have clarity right. and, and, ha and get, right. gain confidence. So, um, another way to, you know, stay committed is to allow yourself to have breaks, you know? So if, if life has happened, if you are overwhelmed, if you are struggling through a certain time, you have all these things going on, go ahead and get, allow yourself to get a break, but a break does not mean quit. A break means slow down for a, a period right. of time and then get back on track. So if say today, you know, it's Thursday, say, you know what? I was supposed to have my, you know, I'm supposed to have my chapter in by next Wednesday. Um, I'm halfway through with it. I'm just going to give myself a break and I will get it the following Monday. I would also like to add a part of commitment is realistic goals. Yes. Yeah. Be you're not going to sit down very rarely does anyone sit down in one sitting and write a whole book. Yeah. It's just, there like are, there are a few that I know of that have done that. Yeah. If, and if you have done that, we would love for you to email us. We will give you a trophy. Just come sit because, next yeah, to me. Yeah. I will just rub up against you. Yeah. And, some like a little meerkat or something yeah. and just get it. <laughs> yeah. Because that's, that's almost, so it's Mary not impossible. Shelley did but, that. Oh, who's, I don't know who that is. Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein. Oh, okay. I and she you. literally wrote yeah. it like in a weekend. Yeah. That's crazy. She wrote the whole thing. So um, kudos to Mary Shelley. Yeah, for Yay real. for you. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah. It's really hard to do that. It is. And so uh, just give yourself permission to do it in segments and in, yes. in, in partials, you yeah. know, you don't have to sit down and just pump out this book. Right. Doesn't work like yeah. that. So you want to have progress and that, that helps you celebrate small wins. Yeah. Absolutely. So like when yeah. you finish a chapter, that's a small win. Yes. When you finish another chapter, that's a small win. Yeah. Yeah. Each week. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And another uh, way to commit is to get rid of distractions and, like, you know, Charlie uses the the three day weekend or, you know, whatever that looks like. And maybe you're not in a position where you can go, you know, right. for three days, but even, you know, carving out um, maybe four, just do four hours. If, if you've just really been, you know, overwhelmed, stuck or whatever, just four hours. Go. I would to, like to publicly say we do not suggest locking your children in the basement. Yeah. Don't do that. No, no, yeah. no. That, that usually you can give yourself that a time might out, backfire but, yeah. on you. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Put yourself in time Put out. Put yourself in time out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and Charlie and I, even as a uh, doctor, uh, our book mama and I, we um, talked about that. How you know when her kids were younger, that's what you know she did. Like mommy's in, in time out. Um, I do take five. Um, 
but in this case, it would probably have to be like a five hour timeout or something like that. Just a window to say, Hey, right. I'm getting this I'm done a little more time. Yeah. And then know, know if, you know, if music maybe um, deter you to not be as um, creative or there's some people that listening to music helps really them, helps you know, them. really find yeah. that flow of what works for you. But for me, like I've got to get rid of all distractions. I need silence. I don't need interruptions. I don't need, you know, all that. Like, I mean, even last night I was working on some things and my daughter came in and was like, mom, are you going to go to sleep? I was like, quit talking to me. Quit talking to me. I'm, I'm in the middle of this. Like, leave me alone. And she was like, okay. But I mean, it's, and it, but it's real. Like, I mean, I was literally like zoned in getting this done. I don't, I don't want anyone to talk to me. Don't look at me too long. Just leave me alone so I can, I can, I can work and, and crank things out. So yeah, those, those are ways for, um, to stay, to help stay committed. So let's talk about the last one. Confidence. Yes. Confidence. Yeah. <sighs> confidence is kind of a loaded. It is. Yeah. It, There's it, layers to each one of these. It's yeah. not one, you know, you can have multiple conversations about these same topics. In learning to write well, first of all, don't go into writing thinking that you are a good writer. A good writer. It's okay to be mediocre. <laughs> it's yes. okay. It, the point is to get the thoughts down. Yeah. Yeah. Don't judge yourself along the way. I see this so, you do too, all the time. I'm writing a book and I have to edit it as I go so that it's, it, and then you get lost in grammar rules that you never learned in eighth grade and so <laughs> it's okay that you don't know all those grammar rules that's what an editor is for yes. get the thoughts down yes that's your yeah. clarity coming in to build up your confidence yes yeah you know Absolutely. um but it's a skill it it's is a skill yeah. uh, it I would takes say, time practice right, all right. of that so what if i what if they fail it's okay to fail it is okay to fail. Just it fail is, forward. Is, yeah, fail forward. And and nothing nothing is really included as a failure unless you quit. Right. But these are I mean, and these are some of the, you know, the thoughts that, that people have that deter them from having confidence. Like, you know, right. you know, failing. And not everybody's gonna believe in you. Right. Yeah. And and I would caution you if you do not have a really strong support system around you, don't tell everybody you're writing a book. Don't do it. No. If if you are surrounded by a lot of negative people, they just don't need to know. Right. Just it's yeah. on a need to know basis. Right. But I would suggest that you find a few people that can really encourage you, build yes. you up, give you confidence, yeah. talk you through it when it gets hard. Yeah, you know, that's one of the things we do as book coaches. You know, we're we're there all the time. We should have pom poms. I really I know, think we right? need to have pom poms. Yeah. I'll pass on the little short skirt, but um, yeah, me too. But I would take some pom poms. Yeah. I got a cowbell, <laughs> so um, that's a football mama coming out. But it there's always the necessity to have a few people in your court who are going to help you reach that bullseye. Like we talked about earlier. Yeah, absolutely. So, but, yeah. But confidence, you do not need people eating at your confidence, like a mm -hmm. bunch of leeches. They do no. not need to be sucking your confidence right out of you. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. And then I think, I think too, with that whole piece is, you know, when you go to those people, you know, you're looking for someone to encourage and then they end up discouraging you. And then you start judging yourself and you judge, you judge your competence. You start comparing yourself. You start, you know, thinking that you're not good enough to write a book or no one is going to read it. Nobody cares to hear your story. All of those, you know, negative thoughts and those limiting beliefs and ideas start, you know, just overtaking the whole idea of writing the book in the first place. Right. So many, many years ago, my mother, who is, um, who, who's not with us on earth anymore, uh, wrote a short story for guidepost magazine. And it was a true story. <clears throat> and I remember when she was writing it and I remember that my dad would encourage her, but there were several people in our little local community who found out, and I don't remember how, because this was way before social media, but they found out and they just thought it was silly that wow. she thought I, I was really, they really thought she was silly 
for thinking. And she was a, she was an educated woman and she had, she was a, a school teacher. She taught English. She taught people to write. I mean, there was no reason that she couldn't write, but for some reason that just seemed beyond their comprehension. But guess what? She did it. She got that story published in guideposts. She sure did. Oh, that's awesome. I want to say yeah. it was around 1980 to 85. Yeah. Sometime in there. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah. So don't listen to those people. Yeah, do not. Do not. Yeah. You keep your, you be your own cheerleader yeah. because you know what's in your heart and in your spirit. And so, um, and don't judge yourself. Right. Don't judge yourself. Don't. I, the first question I had on the phone this morning was, do you think that this book is going to sell? Mm. Wrong question. Yeah. Wrong yeah. question. The question, the better question, this was a children's book. And so the better question would have been, do you think kids will like this? Because isn't that your audience? Isn't that who you're right. writing for? Do you think the kids will like this? That's all yeah. that really matters. Yeah. Or will they learn something from it? Yeah. How, will this help them? Absolutely. Those, that, those type things instead of, you yeah. know, getting discouraged by, you know, book sales or lack of book sales, whatever you that You can't get like. wrapped up in how much money you're going to make when your mm -hmm. book ain't done. Uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> you it's can't get way. wrapped up in how much money you're going to make when your book is done. Right. So it's about serving people. You put your book out there to serve people. And if you're putting it out there for any other reason, yeah, you're probably not going to do so well. Right. That was, that's really good. I like that. But you're, you're writing your story to serve someone else. That's awesome. It really is. Yeah, it's I true. Mean, yeah, that's absolutely. why I'm writing my book is because yeah. I have a group of people that I really want to serve. And you're writing a, a new book, right? Correct. Do we have to say it on there? No, I'm currently, mine is currently on pause because okay. I'm currently working on other projects. But as soon as those other projects are done, um, because it, it's kind of like, even for me, if I'm, if I'm writing or doing ghost writing projects or anything, I will it's sit mine, yeah, I'll yours. sit mine aside yeah. because you get too many things. And then I'm like, Oh, I don't want to put that in my book. I'll put that in theirs or, you know, like it, it's just, it gets too much. So I don't want to, I don't want right. to cross. You get yeah. Dracula in the Flintstone car going to Nottingham. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So, so it is, it is currently on, uh, on pause, but I'm fixing to really like hone in and, and put dates, you know, to yeah. the goals that I have so that I can do it because it's been a, it's been a project that's right. been like, you know, three, but three I know, years the, I know, I know what it's about. And yeah. my point was, is that you have a particular group of people that you want to yes. serve yeah. that, that you're writing yeah. you, your idea for this book is yes. to serve Absolutely. others. Yes. And so I think it's important. Yes. Okay. So, um, where were we? We're on the, yeah. So, you know, um, no one wants to face rejection or criticism or failure when you're passionate about it. So, um, if somebody did want to write about butterflies, you know, our, our job or what we enjoy doing is not to discourage someone, even if they send it to us and they ask us if it's not good. And maybe it's something that we are not really interested in. We're right. not going to discourage anyone um, you know, and, and criticize because that's something that they're passionate about. And the same goes for writing. If you're passionate about butterflies, write about butterflies. There's somebody that will read a book about butterflies. I don't right. know why I keep going back to butterflies. I'm but. not sure. Maybe you're, maybe you're going through a personal metamorphosis. Yeah, there you go. Right there. Yeah. From 2020 so, to 2021. So okay. if she was talking about your passion and staying on your passion, something occurred to me. Uh, I recently heard a, a female, um, I, I guess she's an evangelist. She was talking in the word passion and I'm, I'm dancing around this because I don't remember all the specific details, but the word passion in the Greek originally meant something that causes pain. Mm. So when you're passionate about something, you can expect that it's not going to be easy. Mm. Wow. That's good. So wow. if you're passionate about something and you feel like you really need to write about it, that's great. That's your fuel. But at the same time, it's yes. also going to be the pothole that you can step in. Right. And so you have to go into it with your eyes wide open, knowing that, but that will help you keep your confidence knowing that that is what that means. Yes. It's really good. I like that. Yeah. Well, and I just even want to set the reminder is you're doing something you've never done before. 
But the most important thing is the fact that you were doing something. Right. That's going to help with confidence. It's going to, you know, I mean, you're, it's uncommon. It's something you have. Very rarely do you do anything for the first, first time, time that you did yeah, with really confidence. well. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And so what kind of tips do you have for people in the area of confidence? And well, and it's something that you had even shared um, when we started talking about confidence is the, is the right first edit later. Yeah. Is, is big. Um, I'm, I'm one to, I really do like to go back and look at my work. And then I find, I find myself going, you know, chasing squirrels or going through rabbit holes and like, Oh, I can, you know, I can, I can share this. I can go back and, you know, talk more about this. And sometimes if I do happen to see something when I'm going through it, I'll even just make a, you know, put a comment to my, to myself, like, you know, if some of an idea or something came to mind, but then I have to, you know, revert back to going through the chapter that I actually need to be working on right. instead of. Right. And as you write more books, you will get better at the writing and yes. the editing as you go. And sometimes people, that's just not their gift and they mm -hmm. just don't edit as they go. And yeah. that's okay. So I, We've talked about embracing, you know, thoughts and direction and coaching, but embrace criticism. Yes. Yeah. Embrace now, it. I want to, yeah, I, I want to mm -hmm. put some safe boundaries around that. Okay. What's the question? Can you share ways to get over the hump, break the ice to start writing? Okay. We, well, have we a just question had a question. We'll talk Instagram. about that in just yes. a second. Yes. We so, will come back to that. Sure. Um, I just want to put some boundaries around criticism. If your criticism criticism is that stupid, I can't believe you wrote that. You're not a writer. You should really rethink. Don't quit your day job. If that's what criticism is, then you need to literally let that criticism go in one ear and out the other. Yeah. If your criticism is constructive and it yes. says, have you ever thought that maybe the fourth chapter needs to go before the second chapter? Yes. Have you ever considered that your character needs to be more fully developed because they need to know the personal thoughts and, and uh, foundations of that character? Yes. That is, that's good criticism. That's criticism as a writer that you need to be willing to accept. Yes. Yeah, because if yeah. you're not uh, willing to accept constructive criticism, you are never going to get better. The growth as you know, you've you've stopped the growth as far as a writer. Like you will limit yourself because you will you're not receptive to what others have to share. Right. Right. That come from a place of love. I, I can't remember his name, but I heard a story one time about an author who had written a novel. Um, it was long like Moby Dick times two, like it was long and he tried to get his friends to read it and his friends couldn't even get through it. Anyway, long story short, somebody had the guts to say, you know, as a book, it's really not that good, but maybe you could think about taking every chapter and writing a short story from that chapter and submitting it to a magazine. And he was really offended. And for a long time, he didn't do any. He was offended that nobody really read it. He was offended that the one person who did, that was her suggestion. And then lo and behold, he decided to embrace the criticism and submitted one of his chapters. I want to say it was to the New York Times or, you know, a really big magazine. And anyway, he ended up writing short stories and making a living at it and doing very, very well because he was a great short story writer. And mm -hmm. so I'm just saying that that yeah. criticism can really be helpful. It can be. Yeah. And even if it's like, you know, it's kind of like those realistic goals, you know, you have a goal that you've set for yourself in one direction, but that might not be the direction you need to go. So when it, you do receive that constructive criticism, um, you know, you can do something else. I know we have authors all the time where um, we have a lot of people. And I know there was an, an author that Darren was talking to. I was um, what they call ear hustling. I was listening. I was eavesdropping. What, however you want to say it. Well, there's a new vocabulary <laughs> word for you. Get out the Urban Dictionary. She was ear hustling. Yes. So I was listening to the conversation and he was talking about like um, the, the gentleman on the other end was like his daughter wanted to write a book. And so they wanted to get the, the children, a children's book done. But then he said, well, I'm working on my book as well. 
And so Darren kind of, you know, he, you know, played devil's advocate, so, so to speak. And he was like, you know, what is going, which one is going to be more beneficial? Which direction are, you know, do you want to go in first because doing both of them at the same time or, you know, doing one just because it's a passion project as opposed to um, leveraging your business will be two completely, you know, you need to, you know, make up, you know, prioritize, have clarity and get that one done. Um, and, and the guy was, you know, the, the author was very receptive and, and looking forward to, you know, switching how the order in which he was going to do the book. So right. I think it's really good to have that, you know, like I say, the sounding board, right. you know, for all of that. So we did have a question, a question that yes, came in. Yes, we did. Let's and it hear was that question again. How to start writing. Get over the hump. Get like over the that hump and break the ice of really starting to write. So what would your advice be, Stephanie? It goes back to the very beginning of, of having clarity. I really think, um, and I'm really big on brain dumping, like just getting everything out of my head on paper and then getting with someone who has done it before. You know, making sure that, I mean, even, even if it's just some direction to, you know, do the outline, if you've never written a book before and you're, and you're not a writer, you're, you know, you're just, you just know you want to share your story story, um, making sure that, that you have someone who can guide you on what that looks like mm -hmm. and, and creating the habit. It's the, the biggest thing is like we said, the easiest part is, is what we say starting, but for some, I mean, there is that block. So just even, even if you just start journaling until you can bring dump and get that, that process out, or, um, you know, if you would, we would love to be able to assist and, and walk you through that, uh, to be able to get an outline and give you clarity on what it would look like. And, the overall direction of what book right. you need to write. And just because we're editors, please understand we're also book coaches and that's yes. what book coaches yeah. do yeah. is we yeah. actually coach you through that yeah. process. Yeah. And so uh, I would add that, you know, doing clarity is or, or receiving clarity about your book is knowing that audience, knowing your purpose, writing those things down, making sure that it's really really in your like you have a compass on it you're yeah. you're straight ahead with it so okay um well no and before like i guess we're we're getting ready to segue and, and be be done with it i want to talk i want to just revert back to commitment because that's i think that's really that's something that i i'm working through but there was i, I just want to share um we all we commit to other people we commit to, you know, I'm talking and I'm talking about me. I commit to the authors. I commit to my husband. I commit myself to my children. I commit myself to everyone. Do I commit myself to you? Yeah. Or are you talking about You're here? Ain't yeah. Right. yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, we, we are so easy to, it, you know, commit to other people because we want to serve. We want to help, yeah. but we never commit to ourselves. We always break promises to ourselves and I can't, I mean, it was, it was Rachel Hollis that was sharing, you know, sharing this piece. And it really, it really resonated with me because I'm, I'm quick to do that. I'm quick to say, Oh, I, Hey, I'll commit to doing this. I'll commit to doing that. But when it comes to myself, I just won't commit. I'll just say, Oh, I'll do it tomorrow or I'll do it later or it never gets done. But if, if we can commit to other people, we have, we have it within us to commit to ourselves. Yes. So making sure that, that we are committing to the things that we, that we aspire to do. So with your book, you know, committing to yourself, knowing that, Hey, I am going to get this done. And the same, same applies with me. Like I, I want to commit to, or I'm going to commit to, writing the other book that I've, that I've put on the shelf for, for several years. So I just encourage anyone to stop breaking promises to yourself. If you right. feel led to, words. yeah, if you feel led to write a book, you feel led to share a story, you feel led to, um, you know, start a nonprofit, you feel led to, you know, start a business, whatever that looks like for you, stop breaking those promises to yourself and, and do it, commit to it, get the clarity you need. And that will bring about the confidence in order to get it done. All said, all said. Okay, I think it's time. I think you're going to have to wait for more wisdom till next week. I yes. am Dr. Charlie, the book mama. Stephanie Palmer, the grammar queen. We hope you have a really great week. Bye.